figure P3-15, the one that jumps out is that we have symmetry about the right plane. So if I generate this profile and then mirror it over, I will get the majority of my geometry. So this is again a metric part. And let's um, change this up a little bit just to illustrate that when I go into the uh, to the sketch, if I happen to pick the right plane and don't catch it, not a big deal. I'm going to include my infinite length vertical. It won't look exactly uh, perspective-wise, the, the orientation, it won't look like the um, our drawing in the book, but it will have the, the same uh, same geometry. And so I'm going to bring uh, bring the profile over up and out. Okay, and then for the uh, for the dovetail, come over and in, and that's looking uh, pretty good. So I'm going to use that center line and the object to get my diametral and radial. So a little bit big on the scaling. And we'll see if I can get the correct dimension in this time. Overall height of, let's see, we have 18 to the step and then 22 to the, to the height. So I don't see a direct 40 and since I don't have that line in place, I'm going to go ahead and, and do the math. So the other option here, well, let's, uh, let's complete, complete this out a little bit more. All right, so 20. And we have a, uh, an angle of 60 degrees. All right, but the 60 degrees is off of the vertical. Okay, so that's looking okay. And we had a height, but that is not 18. 18 to the to the steps. 13 to the outside. So we can put the, the 13 there. Alright, so our option if we wanted to include the check in the uh, the sketch is to bring that little angle down and apply apply the 18 and then I could go ahead and dimension the 22 in which case I wouldn't need the uh, the 40 and it'd be more representative of what was on our um, our seed, um, our seed part. All right, so we have that uh, for reference if we need it, and then I grab the midpoint. So I'm going to make sure to get the line this time, and we need a um, a width at the base of 20. So the end point of the line. And it jumped to radial, but I didn't think I uh, I placed that. Nope, must have been uh, must have been selected. All right, so I'm going to hit Control Z a couple times to get back out of that, and then we'll try the dimension again. All right, so that since that pick that selection and 20 millimeters. Okay. All right, so now to complete the mirror, we will select right to left, and the crossing includes the uh, the center line. Since there's only one center line, when I mirror the entities, I should get the desired result. All right, so I do want to include the uh, the dovetail, but I don't necessarily want to include the uh, the two angles. So since those were for reference if I needed to build those up, then this would be one of those cases that after the fact, after I've completed the mirror, that I could switch those to construction geometry. Alright, if I try to mirror construction geometry though, across a construction, it gets kind of lost. It doesn't really know which 
which one to mirror across and it creates uh, some headaches but I can always uh, move it to uh, object geometry complete the mirror and then switch it back to construction geometry so for my shape then I'm going to extrude and then notice that we're clocked 90 degrees and our depth is going to be 45 degrees or 45 millimeters and the contour will be the interior and I'm just going to reverse the uh, the direction for for the shape go ahead and hit OK alright so that means that the sketch and the center I will put on the uh, the front plane so my choice is to just put in all of the all of the dimensions or we can start to tie to some of the other sketch geometry so if I show that sketch these objects are available to create some of that uh, some of that sketch geometry later on all right so uh, let's um, let's tie that in so now my sketch will be on the front plane all right I could open it up on the uh, the face I could open it in the uh, any of the vertical faces and the step being at 18 I'm going to look for that point all right from the uh, center out but I wanted to uh, also illustrate the projections so let's see that goes up to the midpoint all right so that's kind of the problem is unless we're looking on the isometric becomes a little more difficult now I'll be able to pick up some of those those items all right so I don't want the midpoint it's not going to let me directly have that sketch point but if I were to rotate over and select control select those can be coincident because I can project that point into the sketch so a little more complicated than putting on the dimensions but I can control a good portion of this geometry from sketch one if I need to make an adjustment it's going to be in that location all right so if I were to go from the top edge to the line with my angle I'm given 105 so I would end up with um, the 105 minus 90 15 degrees if I want to actually put in the 105 then I need to select the endpoint and the line and then I can pick the vertical and this will give me that that extension to go to 105 and what do we have for the depth 10 millimeters Okay, so that gives me the the step and it's always kind of hard to tell what's going on with the um, with the angle it doesn't look quite the same but we don't really have a, a depth there either so let's go ahead and make the cut it doesn't have to be a, a closed sketch so if I use the open profile I want to identify that little arrow or come over and flip the cut and then we're going to go through all both so if I had opened the sketch on any of the vertical faces well the uh, extended extend uh, the outside we would be uh, through all in one direction would be fine if I did any of the interior vertical faces then I would still be left with through all both all right, and so when I rotate this around you can see that that's the material that's going to be removed and if I don't get the desired result then I'm just going to have to go back and uh, pick up uh, that uh, reverse the uh, the side to cut all right so that sketch is still being shown I have most of my uh, geometry in place and we'll open up the uh, the sketch and since I have that uh, those two profiles in in the uh, the first sketch and it's shown I can just trace over the top of those and we will end up with a depth of 10 millimeters okay so 
when we've done this one previously, now I can hide the sketch by right clicking on it and selecting the eye to hide. Or we can come back over to the feature tree, expand out the arrow, right click and hide show. Alright, so that gives me my geometry. The problem is I don't have any real issues with manufacture until I get to this notch. Alright, these square corners, one of these square corners needs to have a radius or some kind of undercut to uh, to complete it. So just for, for reference, and this being, well, we have a length of 22 millimeters, which is not quite an inch. It's um, between three quarters and a um, and an inch. So, if I were to put a an eighth inch radius, or a let's see if we had. Um, 0.13 inch because I'm still dealing mostly with my inch tools. All right, I would like to have that a little bit oversized, but that's going to increase the manufacturability and reduce the cost. All right, if I need that, then my other option would be to put in a relief. So let's suppress that one out. We'll do our what if scenarios. And I would still like to use the biggest uh, uh, end mill diameter that I can uh, that I can fit in there, and probably should have just gone ahead and made those uh, mirrored, but set those two to equal. And if I were to give it a radius of, we got to 3.3 was good enough. Features extrude cut, we'll give it a through all and make sure it reverses the direction. If that needed to be a square corner, I don't know that that's much of a contact patch, but it is enough of a relief that I could get something in there. So with this length being a deciding factor in the end mill, the other one would be the, uh, the material and the manufacturing process to complete that geometry. All right, so those are optional considerations. I'm going to suppress both those out. That gets us our geometry. And of course, if we're 3D printing it, then we can do all kinds of crazy fun things. So we'll call this, uh, save it and call it good.